Even though we have just two oscillators in Wavetable, it can be easily grouped inside an instrument rack to create even bigger patches than would be possible with a single instance of Wavetable. Hi, my name is Boris and in today's video I'm going to show you the techniques of making full sounding super saw synth patches. It's not going to be about stacking effects and over processing, instead we are going to focus on the core settings of the synths so that we get the best super saw sound possible even before applying any effects. Okay, so let's give our three examples a quick listen. First you'll hear x Serum and then there are two examples made with Ableton Wavetable. All of these sounds that you've heard, as well as this project file, will be available as a free download in the link in the description, so you will be able to save these sounds for your tracks or use some of today's techniques and modify them to your liking. Just a quick reminder, if you like what you see in this tutorial, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We're making all kinds of Ableton Live tutorials like this one. And if you'd like to learn Ableton Live a bit more in depth, check out our Ableton Beginners course, which gives you all the knowledge you need to confidently start building and finishing your first tracks. All right, so let's jump into the project and get started. Also for this tutorial, it would probably be best to wear headphones. It might be harder to pinpoint the details of these sounds if you're listening on speakers in an untreated room, because we're going to be talking a bit about stereo. And also just a quick disclaimer, the sounds that we're going to be using in this video would be closer to a classic Super Saw sound, maybe something a bit closer to the synth from Roland JP8000, which was a synth used in countless trance tracks. I purposefully created a very similar patch with all of these three techniques. I just wanted to show that in Ableton Wavetable and even in a single instance of the synth, you can achieve a lot that you would typically do just with a third party plugin like Serum. All of these sounds that you've heard have been processed with the very same effects, the same reverb and OTT effect on the entire group. As you can see in Serum, there are no effects applied. I will copy the MIDI onto a new track. Let's drop a brand new instance of Wavetable here and let's get started with creating our first patch. I've placed this new MIDI track outside of our group so we don't have any effects going on at the moment. And we have a sine wave that is applied by default. The most obvious thing when we were looking for a super saw is to choose a saw wave as our oscillator. And the next thing would be to add unison voices. So we could go for the classic unison, maybe increase the amount a bit. And let's also make sure that mono is disabled. So in poly mode, we are going to be able to hear this entire clip here. And that sounds a bit weak in my opinion. Maybe we can increase the voices here. We could try to tweak the amount. Here in the classic mode, what I find is that it sounds quite nice in the lower amount settings, but it's not as lush sounding as you would like. So it's probably better for a bit more classic sounds. And for the typical super saw, my preference is to choose the second unison mode here. So the shimmer. And we can stay with the eight voices. This is as much as Wavetable gives us. And when we double click the amount control, it goes back to 30%, which is the default state here. And I actually find that 30% here sounds really nice. So let's hear what that sounds like. In my opinion, this is already slightly thicker because of our different unison mode here. For the typical super saw sound, I usually wouldn't use these other unison modes, but you are obviously free to experiment with these. And values higher than 30% usually would give us a bit too detuned sound. So 30% for me is perfect here. And another thing that's typically used in super saw patches is just stacking octaves on top of each other. So we could enable oscillator 2, switch that one to the saw wave as well, and just pitch it 12 semitones up. So I'm just clicking here right next to semi and typing in 12. You can also drag this and we can try to mix it in and see how much of this we want. 
To me, it sounds fine if we go all the way up here and we have an even distribution of gain between the first and the second oscillator. Now, one thing I like to do is to manage the stereo width here, because to me, this is very wide and I typically wouldn't use this as a main element in a track. Maybe this would be nice to have in the background as maybe a pad, but then maybe we would have to roll down the frequency knob, for example. So yeah, what I like to do is to take utility, and this is a really nice stereo tool, and typically you would use this width control. So you could reduce the width here, but this also might cause a bit of phasing, but because by default, this control basically sums up the left and right signal to the mono signal. And you could actually change the mode of this knob to mid side mode. And here you can dial in how much of the original mid signal, so the mono signal, and how much of the side information, so the stereo signal you want. And you can basically achieve a nice balance between what you have in the middle and what you have on the side. And if you have seen our course on mixing a future bass track with a professional mix engineer, Guido Werner, He's also applying this trick, switching to mid-side mode and managing the stereo width of a uh, main super so sound in a track. And to me, sometimes reducing the sides here with utility can make such a wide unison patch sound more focused, actually. So let's hear how this affects our signal. Okay, so before... and after... I'm staying around minus 40 here. Uh, I'm basically just turning down the side slightly. The sound is more focused in the middle. We could also add the effects. We can just copy these effects from the group and we have a reverb here. So with the reverb, this is already going to sound much bigger. Another technique that's very often used is applying the OTT multiband compressor from Ableton. This is also available as a third party plugin. In short, this applies very heavy compression, boosts the highs and lows and keeps the mids a bit quieter, which can sometimes result in a more, much more powerful signal. And basically we can just dial this in and see how much of this uh, we want. And I find it to sound pretty nice, but you can obviously also use reverb after compression with OTT. Okay, so that would be level one of three. Let's take a look at level two. Here's what it sounds like. To me, it sounds a bit fuller because of two things. First of all, we have two layers of wavetable and these two layers are detuned differently. So different amounts of unison applied. And then we have a noise layer, which gives us an additional layer of thickness on top of our sound. And there's not too much of it. It's at minus 42 dB here. It's subtle, but you can add a bit of fullness here by dialing in some of the noise here. Adding layers here when you have a wavetable and utility, for example, like this, all you need to do is just select the first device, hold shift and select the last device, in this case utility, and you click Ctrl and G on Windows or Command and G on Mac. This groups your devices inside an instrument rack. You can click this button right here, which is called a chains list. You can basically add layers here by right clicking in this empty space and going to create chain, or you can just drop different devices onto here, which creates a new layer. Mixing between these layers basically is done by dragging these sliders here. Yeah, so the first layer here is going to be a mono layer. This is basically what we made in step one. And here we can actually decrease the mid side information all the way and have only the mid signal, so it's completely mono this way, but you don't have to go uh, all the way here. So at minus 60, already quite mono, but not completely. You can de actually decrease the amount of the unison here, so the sound isn't as detuned. And this basically gives us a strong signal in the middle of the stereo spectrum. And with the second layer, we can add a very wide signal and we can detune it a bit more so that in the middle, it's not as detuned. And on the sides, the amount of the unison causes a bit of pitch fluctuation. Basically, this is the same layer. It's duplicated. The amount of the unison is higher at 40% instead of 20.
the sound is very white. We have completely deleted the utility from here, but you could also take this utility instead of lowering it, maybe uh, boost the sides a bit. To me, it's already quite wide even without it. So we have these two layers. They sound like this together. At the forefront, we have this not as detuned mono layer, and in the background, we have this very detuned stereo layer. Here's layer three. This is a noise sample. Okay, so the third layer is made with Ableton's sampler. And if you just drop a sample and you want the simpler device to be converted into sampler, all you need is just to right click on the device name and click the last entry in this drop down menu here. Yeah, so basically what I've done here is I have looped the sound. So I have chosen this second sustain mode so that we are uh, going always forward instead of back and forth here. The second thing is I lowered the scale here to 50% and this gives us two things. Noise sample isn't going to be pitched as much when we play different pitches on the keyboard and it also sounds slightly better than at 0% because then there are slight phasing issues when we play multiple notes at the same time. And yeah, I have just uh, mixed that in slightly with our two other layers. So without and with, we could go higher here. But it's quite important to just mix it in slightly so that it doesn't overpower these two layers. After all, this is just a texture layer. You're not supposed to notice it too much. So yeah, even though we have just two oscillators in Wavetable, it can be easily grouped inside an instrument rack, duplicated, and you can add different oscillators and also different unison amounts here to create even bigger patches than would be possible with a single instance of Wavetable. And adding in noise is also possible. You don't have the option to add noise inside Wavetable, at least not to play a typical noise sample. And it's very easy to set up in Ableton Simpler or Sampler, and I just prefer Sampler because it gives me a bit more flexibility. Okay, so finally, let's take a look at Expert Serum here. So here, actually, the sound is playing a single octave. And we are adding a chord device, which basically takes our MIDI and, and duplicates it 12 semitones up. Yeah, for now, let's just turn that off and let's take a look at what's going on here. I'm also disabling the noise. Okay, so first of all, we have oscillator A and here we have the basic shapes, saw wave, so nothing crazy uh, and seven voices of unison. I'll maybe disable also the effects so that we hear only what's going on inside Serum. So this is the saw wave with seven voices of unison. And what I've done here is I've gone to the global tab and I've reduced the width of this first oscillator here. So only 23% of unison width. And that gives us a bit of a stronger signal in the middle of the stereo spectrum. And we are adding a bit more detuned layer with oscillator B, which is at 100% of width. Yeah, and together this sounds a bit stronger. Especially when we turn on the chord device and we have an octave higher as well. Yeah, we have this macro control assigned to these both detuned knobs. So, so with one knob you can go down here and make it much more detuned. And also we, have, we can turn on the noise here. One shot mode is disabled so that we are looping the sound. Heat tracking is off as well. And this random phase knob is turned all the way up so that we don't get any phasing because every time we press the note, the phase of the sample is different. Okay, so all together. We could use some of the built-in effects inside Serum. It has a really nice multiband compressor, reverb, all kinds of effects. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be using the same effects from Ableton. And here's what it sounds like with effects. And also in the global tab, consider changing the mode of unison from linear, which is the default state, to super or even to exponential like this for a more focused sound. 
And to see the changes, uh, we can go back to linear and maybe increase the detune here and increase the voices slightly. And you will see how the voices here, when I drag the detune knob, are distributed quite evenly. And when I switch to super, these voices in the middle are, are going to be a bit closer to each other. In the next mode, it's even more obvious. Uh, so you can see that the two middle voices are extremely close to each other. In my opinion, the super mode sounds really great. It gives you a very focused sound here and some really nice detuned voices on the sides as well. So yeah, we are using the super mode for our sound here. And if you are looking for slightly different timbers, you can try different waveforms here, different wavetables. For example, here we have saw rounded, which should sound definitely less harsh. Or maybe there's this hypa from digital, but to me that doesn't introduce a huge difference. So I like to stick with basic shapes. And the same actually applies to wavetable. There are also different kinds of saw waveforms available. For example, we have the quad saw here. So you could try this one. It can sound slightly grittier. And there are also some nice saw type waveforms in the vintage section, so make sure to check that out. Also, when it comes to stereo, to me, there's nothing wrong with having your super saw fully stereo. If it's the main element of your track and you would like to have it very focused sounding, it's usually worth considering turning down the sides a bit. It also allows you to make sure that the sound doesn't disappear when played on a mono system. So for example, when someone plays your track on a phone, it's less likely to disappear because of some phasing issues. Yeah, and anytime when you are out of oscillators, it's a really cool trick to use the chord device and you can also use it with wavetable and this just basically multiplies your MIDI and you can uh, use it an octave higher here or basically you can go inside the MIDI editor and just copy the notes. Uh, that's pretty much up to you. All of these sounds that you've heard as well as this project file will be available as a free download in the link in the description. So you will be able to save these sounds for your tracks or use some of today's techniques and modify them to your liking. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you would like to explore Ableton more, we're running a music production academy over on our website with start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres, as well as the Ableton beginners course in which you can learn all the necessary basics of production. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, write us a comment, and I will see you in the next tutorials. Hi, this video is sponsored by us. If you like these tutorials and want to support the channel, check out our website packed with online courses and professional sound packs. If you want to cut years of your learning curve, check the PML Beginner to Advanced Music Production program for Ableton Live. You will know Ableton inside out and learn how to write, produce, mix and master complete tracks. You learn step by step at your own speed, from an empty file to professional production, as if we're sitting side by side in the studio. Thank you for listening.